Hello and welcome to the Intentional Clinician Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Kraus, Licensed Professional Counselor. Unfortunately, today I'm coming to you in a state of emergency. This is an emergency podcast affecting all 10,000 counselors in the state of Michigan and all of their clients as well, which could be upwards of 200,000. It is September 17th, 2019, and strange things are going on in the state of Michigan, including the Licensing and Regulatory Authority of Michigan trying to change the scope of practice based on a reinterpretation of a 1988 rule. Very strange after 31 years that they've decided to change their mind and basically take away the ability to diagnose and supervise, which would render all private practice counselors essentially out of business by November of 2019. Meanwhile, we have an excellent counseling bill that uh, the counselors have been working on to update the scope of the licensure. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my first of two guests. So stay tuned and find out how you can help our situation. If you're a counselor in any state or anywhere in the world, this ruling going on in the next two weeks to, who, who knows, maybe three months, could affect your scope of practice as well. So we'd appreciate your help here in Michigan. This is a short edition of the podcast, and there will be steps in the show notes on how you can help and get involved. Wherever you are, we'd love your support. Thank you so much, and send this to everyone you know. Mental health is important. We're facing a mental health crisis in America, and we need counselors along with other professionals to all help our community out. Thanks for listening. You're listening to the Intentional Clinician Podcast with Paul Kraus, licensed professional counselor. Today's guest is James Blundo. He's an LPC, and he is the executive director of the Michigan Mental Health Counselors Association. We're going to be discussing two things. One, the counseling bill that the counselors in Michigan are hoping to pass through and also the proposed rule changes to the LPC scope of practice here by the Licensing and Regulatory Authority of Michigan. So welcome, James. Thank you. So absolutely. I guess um, I'd love to just dive right in. If you can kind of explain whichever order you want to, what's going on and why it's important for people. Uh, Let me start with the... um it's in, it's in the House of Representatives in Michigan right now. It's called House Bill 4325. We've negotiated um, everything that we could to codify our ability to diagnose, our supervision, um, and to do testing and other things that just cod- just codify our scope of practice because a scope of practice was built into our license way back in the beginning. And we've always held those standards. So house bill 4325, which I think will uh, move forward. I'm testifying Thursday before the health policy committee. Um, And we think we have the votes. We have a lobbyist who's working very hard to assist us. And if it goes out of that house um, in good shape, which I think it will, and then it's going to go for um, Ways and Means Committee, and then it's going to, and within a few days, it'll go to the full House of Representatives for a vote. Okay, so that is some pretty good news. And today's date that we're actually recording this on is Tuesday, September 17th, 2019, and we will be launching this podcast uh, as an emergency podcast. I'll be launching it tomorrow, September 18th. So um, we don't really have an estimate on time, but it sounds like this is a bipartisan supported bill. Uh, it makes sense to update the 1988 uh, bill that was passed for licensed professional counselors to practice in Michigan. And essentially, I was reading through the bill, and I feel like it actually raises the standards um, for LPCs and just mental health in, in general with very good supervision requirements and other things like that. Is that correct? That would be correct. We've modernized it the best we can. We had to negotiate with the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs and with other people. Uh, We were challenged by the Michigan Psychological Association. We tried to address their concerns, but they were never satisfied. So we are passing this bill without their um, support. And uh, Laura is remaining neutral. 
licensing mm-hmm. regulatory authority. And that's really unfortunate because I, I actually spent nine years uh, working in Arizona as a professional counselor. I was a uh, understudy there for a while working on getting my full LPC. And eventually I did through supervision and I worked together really well with social workers, licensed marriage, family therapists, and uh, plenty of psychologists. We were great colleagues. We referred back and forth. They'd refer certain uh, clients to me for EMDR therapy with a psychologist. And I would refer them for psychologicals, especially when car accidents and other things were involved and other things. Um, And so I felt like it was good camaraderie and same uh, when I was living in Chicago uh, I got along with uh, different mental health professionals in there as well. So uh, the, it's. I think the not only are the counselors a little bit upset about what's going on, which I'm going to have you address, but I think this is really unfortunate that you know there's a, a growing population uh, of people that are uh, needing help, whether it's through uh, mental health concerns or circumstantial life changes, trauma, substance abuse, addiction. Um, major things that people are going through at this time. We have a suicide epidemic, an opiate crisis has been in uh, play, and teen depression is at an all-time high. And it seems like uh, mental health professionals should be working together to work with our best strengths so that we can address all areas. But it, it's, a little, uh, it's a little disconcerting and upsetting to kind of hear that they're opposing a bill that would just solidify what we've already been doing for 31 years in this state. Any comments on that? Yeah, um, that's hard to comment on because it's ditto. The uh, the <laughs> the important uh, part of this is that our bill is being supported by the legislature. It's bipartisan, and if Laura didn't interfere, it will pass. Um, we have gotten them to take a neutral position, but but what they did is they went to our board of counseling, which is the body that oversees our license in Michigan and uh, told them that they want to change the scope of practice or they're going to change it. And the um, board unanimously voted against them doing that and said it was not their uh, prerogative or their role. And they just went ahead and decided to do this. So now there's a set of changes, uh, large changes to our um, scope of practice. And what the tricky part is, is they're saying there's not much change because they're just saying they're putting it under education material. And what they're doing is reducing their scope so that we can't do uh, testing, we can't do diagnosis, we can't do supervision and other features. So uh, that's the, the other side of this story. So that's why um, we're sending out this emergency request for counselors to write uh, to the um, to the people who are going to review this. They're trying to make an administrative rule change. And the only public hearing for it is going to be on October the 4th in Lansing. And we're, we're coalescing hundreds, maybe hopefully thousands of counselors across the state to show up and give their, express their opinion. So, and they seem to be rushing to do this, even though they took a supposed neutral position on the bill right. that should be going through. Right. They're uh, they're they're saying these are small changes just because of a change from one from one area to education. I think it got cut off when you said that. But essentially, right. taking away the right to uh, diagnose, taking away supervision, essentially makes any private practice licensed professional counselor immediately go out of business because right. you cannot submit to insurance, um, and you. You know, and you can, and how many people have people that only pay cash only? That's not, that's a very small percentage of most people's practices. Right. Uh, Most people utilize insurance or Medicaid. And so that would immediately put out of business any counselor in Michigan who has a private practice. And uh, number two, it would basically render LPCs as not a good hire for hospitals. Mm -hmm. Um, schools, even, um, you know, mental health clinics by the state anywhere because their state is now going to have to spend extra money to supervise them since LPCs can't supervise themselves according to this rule change. So really it's a, it's a strange turn of events about why they're rushing to do this. And when usually I thought the licensing and regulatory authority was supposed to protect the people of the state and, 
their right. role is to protect people. And, I, and I've heard, you know, they get involved when, I don't know, say some doctors handing out hundreds and thousands of opiates and the medical board gets involved and the licensing and regulatory authority could get involved and, and work on that. But in this case, um, it seems baffling about why they would want to stop this when in, as far as I understand, you can correct me, but in the other 49 states, um, counselors, LPCs have the rights that we are seeking and we've had for 31 years. Is that, am I up to speed no, on you're, that? You're up to speed. There may be a few states that don't have these, um, their needs exactly being addressed. Exactly right. But, right. That, that but, but we're, we're right. We're, we're really have, actually the license is really strong. We've never would have had a problem if Laura hadn't stepped in. And uh, when you say that it's strange, I agree because it's really going to hurt, uh, there are 10,000 licensed professional counselors and limited licensed professional counselors in Michigan. And we estimate that about 150,000 um, citizens of Michigan are going to be hurt by this because they won't be able to get the services that they were getting. They'll be cut off. So, yes, exactly. Because the, we, it would be, the state would basically be telling us that we couldn't diagnose, which is part of our scope of practice. And so we would basically have to break the law to continue seeing our clients and we wouldn't be able to really charge them if they had insurance, which is most people. So 150,000 plus, I think, uh, yeah. people could be without counseling in the middle of a time when our country and our state is facing a crisis of depression, anxiety, addiction, other things like that. So it's very strange that Lara is deciding to take this stance, the licensing and regulatory authority, because it doesn't seem that it's serving the people of Michigan. It seems... Um, like some sort of game, uh, some sort of power thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if if there was a problem with counselors, I'm sure that we would have had hearings on that and, and known about that. But instead, um, you know, counselors are just trying to serve and help people right now. And I, I would just say as a counselor myself, it's, it's a little bit, uh, not a little bit, it's very uh, scary to be working because I don't want to burden my clients with this information. I'm sure they'll learn from the news. Uh, you know, and we have very strict ethics codes on what we can, um, you know, what we do. And so uh, essentially here we are sitting here possibly uh, going to be unemployed. And I think being unemployed by the state, um, which is just bizarre. Uh, and, and am I off on that, James, or does that sound accurate no, to you? No, that's accurate. I, I had a woman call me Friday and uh, th sh this is a second career for her. She was in another field mm -hmm. and uh, she's a single parent raising kids, older teenage kids. And she really did a wonderful job developing a very effective practice and has a very great reputation. And uh, she said, I, it's really, this decision is destroying my life, destroying mm -hmm. my ability to make a, a, a living wage and, uh, and hurting my clients. And uh, she just couldn't believe that the state would be that cruel. Yeah, I can't believe the state would be that cruel. And I also just can't believe that they don't, they're not thinking of the people. They're not only th not thinking yeah. of the clients who will have to shift counselors. And if the client has post-traumatic stress disorder or um, history of suicidality, I've heard that, I mean, there it, there is no real, like one cause for suicide, but a disruption where you are, a, are not able to see your counselor that you've developed trust and rapport with could lead to dire consequences. Yeah. Uh, and they certainly aren't thinking of the counselors who have built their lives around their license, around their graduate education, their continuing investment in studying the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual and studying um, therapies and the latest empirical value. And I, I feel personally, uh, you know, I've been spending my time trying to bring trauma-informed counseling to the state of Michigan. I'm working on getting my MDRIA certification so I can teach counselors, therapists, psychologists, social workers, whoever wants to come techniques to help people with post-traumatic stress disorder so they can recover instead of just being on uh, medications or disability for the rest of their life. And that's what I made my whole counseling center about. So uh, it's a scary time and it's, it's, it's uh, a little bit strange. So essentially I'm, I'm going to be posting all the information. It doesn't matter if you're in this state, if you're in Michigan, please call your representatives, call your, uh, call the state uh, representatives, call they the can, governor's office, call, go ahead. They can go to uh, uh, our website, mmhca.org, oh. MMHCA and in, in there we have the um, our lobbyist opinion of the thing and also 
links to some of the, uh, the decisions that Lara has made. There's depends on how deeply you want to get into the understanding, but um, we have all that information on there, plus where to send your testimony if you can't be in Lansing on October the 4th. If you can be, the more the better we want to fill the auditorium. And they said that everybody would have a chance to express their opinion. So might be a long day, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The Michigan Mental Health Counselors Association webpage. So you can Google that. I will have the link in the notes. I'll have the email to express your testimony to the licensing and regulatory authority. I'm also going to be including um, the contacts of uh, different representatives in Michigan. And as well as if you live in Michigan, you can look up, find my representative. You can Google that uh, Michigan right. and then find my Senator Michigan. And you can also call or email them. I find calling and emailing effective. Um, I think that they will be, uh, as I actually heard today, one of them was quite stunned that this was going on. Um, uh, you know, in the middle of, of this. And I know, so I'm hoping that, you know, J uh, James, thank you to you for testifying. Uh, hopefully we can get this bill, um, HB, what is it? Four, three, four, two, five, yeah. four, three, two, five, HB four, three, two, five by rep Miller. I hope it would be nice if you could get it passed before this meeting on October 4th. Um, because yeah, yeah, honestly, I mean, people are trying to take care of their children, trying to take care of their family. We're trying to help all of our clients get better, recover, and not need uh, therapy and be able to get out there and live the life they want right. or recover from something. And and really, it's you know it's going to be a couple stressful weeks if the bill doesn't pass and we have to actually go fight well, the, this in person. The, the bill won't happen before this uh, October 4th. Oh, okay. Because here, here's this really the straightforward scoop. It'll pass most likely, or at least we're hoping, it'll pass the House of Representatives and having people call and tell their house a representative member that they would like this bill to be passed is really great. But it then has to go before the Senate. Oh, I see. Then it passes through the Senate. They, we don't think that could happen before um, the beginning of December. Um, and we're trying to make sure the governor will sign it when we get there. So the bill won't make it till December. If they can put those new rules in beforehand, the, our bill won't be able to go through. Okay. Because that's that's the dirty side of this whole business, right? And so, if they can put those new rules through, they will disable counselors from practicing right before Christmas. So that'd right. be that'd be nice. Terrible, mm -hmm. um, very terrible. So, I mean, I, you know, I do think anything can happen. This is politics, but I think with enough voices, uh, I think we can make some change to either stop Laura from implementing these rules, or maybe who knows, maybe even speed up the process, even though it's not likely. Um, mm -hmm. So. I would encourage anyone who's out there, you know, don't feel helpless. Um, write in the show notes. We'll have all of that. Call people. It, it'll maybe take, t uh, you know, to write in takes five to 10 minutes. Calling people maybe a little bit longer. We really appreciate your support wherever you're listening in any other state. Um, this uh, could affect your state at some point if this is a precedent set by Michigan. So if you're a counselor or social worker or anyone out there, um, do take heed that uh, we need your help here in Michigan and we would appreciate your support as well. So that's what I've got to say, James, and I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. I know that you've um, been working so hard for us and I hope any Michigan counselors listening to this who have not joined the Michigan Mental Health Counselors Association or the American Mental Health Counselors Association or the American Counseling Association will take this seriously and realize it's important to join even to just pay the dues. Um, because we have, uh, you know, our vocation, our calling in life is to help people. And sometimes it gets complicated and we need to be able to have the rights to help people get better. Okay. That sounds good. I wanted to say one more thing if I oh, could. Sure. Absolutely. This is not related to that, but uh, we, we have uh, one um, trauma recovery experts coming to Michigan on October the 12th. Okay. It's his name is Dr. Colin Ross, and uh, there are two other people who are extremely involved worldwide in the process of uh, PTSD and trauma recovery, and that workshop is going to be in Lansing um, on October the 12th, and we'd like to have people um, participate or attend, because we're going to do more than just this one workshop on trauma, because that's a huge issue. Absolutely. So and what was his name again? Just to repeat that, because I think it cut out for a second when you said that. Oh, it was Dr. Colin Ross, C-O-L-I-N. Colin Ross. Yeah, okay. he's a medical doctor with years of 
experience in trauma recovery. Wonderful. And then people can sign up for that on Michigan Mental Health Counselors Association website, which I'll have the link to in these Absolutely. Notes. Sure. Thanks. Well, thanks so much, James. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. And if you've been listening, this is Paul Krause, licensed professional counselor here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I'm now interviewing Ben Reesterer, also an LPC. Welcome, Ben. Thanks, Paul. So, Ben, we have been discussing that some odd things are afoot here in Michigan. After about 31 years, uh, the Licensing and Regulatory Authority of Michigan has decided to start reinterpreting some of the language from the 1988 bill uh, that allowed LPCs to begin practicing as licensed practitioners in the state of Michigan. Um, So we're really not sure why that's happening. Uh, this quickly when we have a very good bill that seems to take care of their concerns coming out, uh, which is HB 4325, and it seems to have bipartisan support, that would clarify some of their issues with the old 1988 uh, couple sentences of vague language. But more about what would happen to the greater community, what would the ripple effects be in Michigan if the licensing and regulatory authority moves forward on October 4th to change these rules for LPCs? Yeah. So, I mean, first off, I think it's really important to recognize that like, it's really hard to know what all the ripple effects will be. There's always unintended consequences of these things. So making these quick changes without um, really looking at all these effects can be really negative in the sense that we just don't know what will happen. But some of the things that we know will happen right off the bat will just be like reduced access to care for a lot of different people. Um, The state of Michigan already has a lack of access to quality mental health care um, and taking a significant uh, percentage of those people off the board will just exacerbate that problem. It'll uh, licensed professional counselors work with people that are dealing with opioids. They work with people that are dealing with suicidal ideation. They deal with a whole swath of mental health issues and uh, reducing access and taking that away from those people um, at a time when they're dealing with those things would be really uh, harmful and negative. And I think it's really important for us to take that into account and uh, pay attention to the ripple effects that that will have for individuals and for families and for uh, the state of Michigan as a whole. I think the, the next most important thing is just for either people that hold the license or people that are uh, in programs that are students to uh, to pursue this license in this, uh, at this time right now. Um, Many of us have taken out loans to, to pursue this education. Um, If you have a master's degree, you spent at least six years in school, which means you spent a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of effort to pursue this licensure. Um, Myself, I uh, am a veteran and I use my post 9-11 GI bill to be able to uh, pursue this career which would essentially make that GI Bill um, wasted if I'm not able to to practice based on what I I use the GI Bill to to achieve. All these people would then have their incomes uh, either severely impacted or taken away, which would negatively impact the economy, um, as well as themselves and their dependents can cause a lot of stress and a lot of trauma in those ways. I think another thing to to pay attention to is the fact that a lot of these therapists or counselors are hiring support staff to help them with their practices, and those people would be negatively impacted as well, as well as their families. And then also the universities uh, in the state of Michigan that have um, counseling master's degree programs. Um, These Many of these universities are state-funded, meaning that they spent untold amount of tax dollars to set up these programs and to administer these programs, um, to hire professors, to hire support staff, to train people to be mental health providers, um, to help with the mental health issues that people in Michigan face. And all that would be also taken off the board. And all those tax dollars would essentially be for naught in that situation as well. So I think those just those few things right there are major concerns with just kind of playing with this language and not letting this bill work its way through the legislature, which, like you already said, has bipartisan support. So I don't really know why this needs to be done now. Right. It's a very strange thing that the rule change would happen when the bill to correct and solidify the practice of licensed professional counselors in Michigan is headed through the legislature. We can only speculate at that, but I want to I add on to a couple of your very good points, which is we 
the estimate, I don't have the exact number, is that over 10,000 licensed professional counselors would be unable to diagnose and effectively treat their clients. They would have to go against their ethics books. The state would be asking them to go against their ethics that they've signed and sworn to uphold um, to treat people. Um, the, so over 10,000 LPCs, if we estimate that each one of them has on average maybe sees 20 to 30 people a week, that's a lot of people that could be impacted. And this at a time when you already mentioned we have a suicide epidemic going on, we have an opiate crisis going on, and recently I read a study that said teen depression statistics are up 30% in the last three years. So uh, we don't have to look around to see that licensed professional counselors are actually well needed in this state and work together quite well with other professionals in the mental health profession. I lived in Arizona and worked there as an LPC for many years, both in social services and then in my own private practice for years. And I got along with other practitioners, worked really well, and we did a lot of good work. And it's just very strange that in other, every other state that I've been able to look up, licensed professional counselors have the right to diagnose and treat um, with counseling, which is uh, effective. The research shows that counseling, uh, according to Bruce Wampold's study of 10,000 meta-analysis on counseling, 79% of the participants in counseling of only six sessions reported feeling better and doing better in their life and work post-counseling, and only uh, 20, uh, 21% were neutral or not feeling better. So it's a well-needed practice. And especially at this time, the state of Michigan needs LPCs to be able to practice and work. And as you said, um, it's not so simple. It's not so like a bunch of LPCs are working in a hospital or some sort of state funded clinic, and it will be easy to just, you know, change everything over quite simply if these rules pass. A lot of, L um, I would, I don't know the exact number, but a majority of LPCs that I've come in contact with are actually what in what's called private practice. So they have uh, patients depending on them week in and week out to help them with a myriad of uh, mental health concerns and also just life stressors and different things that can be going on that we discussed. And so this would have a gigantic effect on the state of Michigan's people and um, not to mention businesses and uh, the actual practitioners themselves. And I must say, it is a challenge right now, as we are in this unknown space, to wonder, what will I do uh, for my clients who cannot afford to see me, who are on Medicaid, that I take that insurance, and they can't afford to pay me? And I certainly, according to the ethics, will not abandon my clients and my patients. Um, and what do I do about the clients who have private insurance who are depending on paying me a low copay so that they can get the help that they need for the time that they need it? And then I won't be able to bill insurance if this goes through. So we are also calling upon everyone to write the state of Michigan. That email will be in the uh, notes of the show and write your local uh, representative and your local senator in the state of Michigan and also you feel free to write the governor's office. And we're hoping that Bill HB 4325, there'll be more on that in this show, um, will be passed sooner than maybe this hearing or as an alternative to this, to this hearing for this, what we see as unnecessary and quite absurd uh, rule change. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, at the end of the day, this can have a ripple effects for the mental health readiness of the state of Michigan, as well as the economy, as well as the state's budget. Um, and all those things need to be taken into consideration and protected through this House bill that has bipartisan support. Well, thank you, Ben, for your time. And I appreciate everyone listening. And if you, even if you're not in the state of Michigan, feel free to weigh in on this issue. We appreciate your support. This has been an emergency edition of the Intentional Clinician Podcast. I really appreciate you sending this to anyone and everyone who is in, needs to know this. LPCs and other states, mental health professionals all around the United States, around the world, and of course, any clients. In Michigan, you can still see your LPC and be reimbursed for insurance. These are only proposed rule changes. They have not taken effect, and we are going to work so they do not take effect. If you are scared, please email the board, uh, the licensing and regulatory authority, I'll have that email 
in the notes. You can email and call the governor. You can email and call the Senate Majority Leader, the House Speaker in Michigan, and you can also uh, email and call your local representatives. Call your local media. Um, this is absurd. We do not want 150,000 to 200,000 people to lose their count to lose their counselors um, before Christmas this year, and also the devastation that would happen to the lives of the counselors who would be essentially unemployed and um, all their dependents and support staff and everyone working with them. We appreciate you listening to this episode. Thank you so much for anything you can do, even if it's just sharing this with a friend. Thank you so much. This has been Paul Krause.